one and all and welcome to Seen Through Glass. Now last year I proclaimed that it was finally time for me to get another Jaguar F-Type, some five years after I sold my original Jaguar F-Type R Coupe. Well today I am finally acting on that proclamation because I'm down at Lucas Jaguar West London and I'm here to collect my new F-Type. I really don't want to drag this out any longer, so I reckon let's crack on, reveal my new F-Type, and then I'll get into the how, what, when, where, why, etc. So yes, welcome to my brand new 2022 Jaguar F-Type R Coupe, finished in tourmaline brown. We'll come back to that. I actually ordered this car last October. I'm sorry I've kept it a secret, but there are a number of reasons why I kept it a secret. Mainly because I wanted to kind of wait until I knew exactly when this car would turn up, and there were some question marks over that because some of the choices I was looking at did put a big question mark over production timelines. But I'm super happy with the spec I finally decided on and so happy that this car is now here ahead of summer and just one month before my birthday. Let me talk you through the full spec and then we'll get into why I ended up choosing a brand new F-Type R as my next F-Type instead of all the other choices that we've been talking about for the last 18 months. Yes, I may have just collected this car, but I am taking it straight into mainland Europe. More on that shortly, because here it is, in all its glory, my new F-Type, which for now I'm going to affectionately nickname Truffle, because yeah, it's brown. <laughs> like I already mentioned, this colour is officially called Tourmaline Brown, and it's actually from Jaguar's SVO Premium Palette, which means it's an expensive option, but not a super exclusive one. I think you can actually choose this colour on most Jaguar products, and maybe even some Land Rover products as well. Um, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know I've been banging on about the idea of having a brown car. So whilst maybe you expected me to choose a green F-Type, uh, no, for me this was always going to be the choice. And Jaguar does actually have some sort of heritage or some history with brown cars. Uh, Fangio's C-Type was a kind of bronzy brown, uh, but really I just, yeah, I chose this colour because I wanted it. <laughs> um, tourmaline brown, it's kind of got a bit of a reddish hue. In some lights it looks desaturated, but most of the time I think it looks like a real dark chocolate truffle brown, hence the nickname. Anyway, oh, that's very nice. Portofino. Um, let's move on from the colour and talk you through some of the other options that I selected. Uh, first of which is the exterior black design pack, which combines the black pack and the exterior design pack. So essentially we de-chrome the car, but then add in some body coloured elements. So, you know, you've got the black grille, black window surrounds, but body coloured front splitter, body coloured side skirts, and the body coloured rear diffuser. And that's because I was trying to achieve Achieve a bit of an old-school Jag vibe with this car, kind of elegant, gentlemanly spec on one of their sort of most modern 
product and yeah that's why I liked the combination of some body coloured elements and then some black elements. Now moving around the side of the car I guess the big elephant in the room which we haven't addressed yet is those yellow calipers which signify the ceramic brake options. Now one of the benefits of spending so much time in Jaguar's F-Type R convertible which they lent me whilst this car was being built was that I really got to figure out what options I I wanted on my own F-Type and in the F-Type R convertible every now and again when I was on big European road trips or maybe out driving with other friends I kind of just wish the car had a little bit more stopping power or performance and that's what these ceramic brakes should offer. I mean firstly look at them they look amazing and they felt great just on the drive here and actually I love the way the yellow calipers work with the brown paint um, so yeah really happy that I've gone with that option even though you don't see it that often on an F-Type. Uh, for wheels actually when you select these ceramic brakes these are the only wheels you can have. Uh, I did ask about a sort of dealer fit upgrade but that started to get a bit complicated and actually if I'm honest now seeing them in the flesh on this car I really like them. I really like the design, I like the sort of diamond cut style finish and the fact that they show off those yellow calipers and those brakes so well. Uh, moving around the back, one really important thing for me specking an F-Type R Coupe was to have no privacy glass, especially because I was going for this kind of classy spec or what I hoped would be a classy spec. Uh, if you do choose the privacy glass it basically tints that rear window for the hatch and then these kind of side bits here which I think just seems a bit pointless so yeah very happy to have the clear glass. Then let's move on to the interior because this was really where I struggled because for the latest generation F-Type you basically get well kind of four options for the interior. Three leather options, black, tan and red leather and then these suede cloth performance seats. Now I did actually speak to SVO, uh, Jaguar's Special Vehicle Operations, about potentially doing a kind of chocolate or truffle leather or suede cloth interior to kind of complement this paint. But it was going to really slow down the production of this car and I was just kind of desperate for it. So after a lot of consideration I went, actually you know what, let's go with the black suede cloth because it just, well, I think it gives the car a bit more of a sporty edge. Uh, you don't get the beautiful design, that you, the stitching design that you get with the uh, Windsor leather seats. But, yeah, I don't know why, just in my mind, it gives the car just a bit more of a purposeful feel from the interior. Uh, I also went with the, the black pack inside just to sharpen things up. Uh, we've gone for the Meridian surround speakers, which I found out is pretty much an essential as is the pan roof. If you are ever specking an F-Type Coupe, get the pan roof. It makes it feel like I'm still driving a convertible even though I've got that fixed roof. There we go. I feel like I'm probably forgetting a few of the options that I ticked in all of the excitement, but I am so happy with how this turned out. I personally think it looks mega. Anyway, let's jump back inside because I've actually got a train to catch. address why I'm heading straight into mainland Europe with this car. It's not just to celebrate the fact I've got it and to go and have some fun in the Alps, I'm actually going for work. And this is the first of quite a few European adventures I'm going to be doing with this car this summer. And that's because this thing is essentially becoming my daily. Attentive regular viewers among you will have noticed the plate that this car is wearing. A registration plate that previously appeared on my Audi RS6. Well, if you haven't listened to the latest episode of my podcast, Behind the Glass, you won't know I sold the RS6. It's actually been gone a while. If you want to find out all the reasons why, go and listen to the podcast. But yeah, this essentially replaces the RS6, at least for me. This is the car that I want to be using on most occasions, keeping the 360 and my upcoming GT3 for special occasions. 
This is the new workhorse. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. So today, I'm gonna to head over to Belgium to meet up with the team from Podium, who I've been filming with recently. They're taking part in a crazy track day at Zolder with some incredible cars. We're gonna be doing some filming for their channels. I'm making a very cool video for my channel. And yeah, I was like, great. I can take the F-Type because that's how I'm gonna be using this thing. How cool is that? the last few adventures I've done into mainland Europe have been in my 360, a 20-year-old Ferrari. So today, I am loving the modern technology in this F-Type. Got Apple CarPlay, cruise control, a digital readout of my MPG, I know how much fuel I've got left. It's easy, I've forgotten how nice it is to do one of these journeys in a modern car. It's not saying it's not nice in the 360, it's just a bit more work. And actually, all of this sort of latest tech, the latest infotainment system in this F-Type is one of the reasons why I decided to choose a new F-Type as my next F-Type. According to those modern digital readouts, I've been achieving around 29 MPG so far today, which I think is pretty good from a five litre supercharged V8. Especially here in Europe, we drive a little bit faster on the motorways. I get the feeling that in the UK, on a good day, I'm about to get over 30 MPG out of this car. Oh, so what a fantastic daily. journey from the start, you'll know I was originally considering three different F-Types as my next F-Type. Uh, the original F-Type SVR, the Project 7 and the new P450 rear wheel drive, the kind of baby V8. But then Jaguar went and lent me the new F-Type R convertible and, and you all predicted it at the time and maybe I was just naive to the fact that was the quickest and easiest way for them to convince me the new F-Type R was the car that I should choose. Because after a couple of months of driving that thing, I was like, ah, oh, this is the car to get. This latest F-Type is just better than all the F-Types that have preceded it in so many ways. Better to live with, better to drive. So that meant the old SVR was immediately out the window. And as cool and as special as the Project 7 is, and as much as one day I would still love to own one, it's super impractical in the UK, and I want to daily this car. Dailying a Project 7 would have been intense. And then once you've driven the full-blooded P575R, stepping down to the baby P450 V8, even in rear-wheel drive form, it's just not as exhilarating. And the fact this car is all-wheel drive means I can use it year-round as a daily, as I keep saying. And then finally, Let's not forget, Jaguar are about to go through a bit of a, a reinvention. They're going all electric, which means this could be the last combustion engine sports car we ever see from Jaguar. And as a big Jaguar fan, that felt like a very important car, a car that I felt I needed to have. So yeah, hopefully you now understand why I decided a new F-Type R had to be my next F-Type. Oh, that's police. I was like, wow, that bike's moving fast, but it's a copper, so go get him, mate.
Well then, destination reached. I have made it to Zolder and you're seeing behind me a bit of a teaser to at least one of the cars that I'm here to film. It's the new V12 Vantage. Stay, stay tuned. But what an amazing first journey in this car. Look, F-Type is nothing new to me, nothing new to you. So it's nothing revolutionary, this content that I'm bringing you, but it's a truly special moment. It's properly, it's properly celebrating F-Type being back on the channel. I know Jag were very kind lending me that green R convertible for the last 12 months or so, but this is a whole different narrative and I've got so many plans for this thing. Whilst I'm just dipping into Europe today, I'm back in about a week's time for a proper adventure and I want to get this thing up on some mountain roads, see what those carbon ceramic brakes are like and just enjoy it. Because I have to say, this car did sound louder today than that convertible R has sounded for the last 12 months. So I want to experiment with that. But yeah, oh, it's just, I mean, come on, brown. If you're a fan of the brown, by the way, give this video a thumbs up if you're a fan of truffle. Uh, if you're not, I guess keep your thoughts to yourself. <laughs> but subscribe now so you don't miss future content, both of these cars, uh, and all the F-Type adventures ahead. I will catch up with you very soon.